Hey everybody, so today we are continuing with our music series and we're going to be talking about a very special band and that is Bell and Sebastian. I absolutely love them and I can't get enough of them and I've never been able to see them live until this week and it was, it was amazing. It was just brilliant on so many levels. I don't know how to explain it. I had the absolute best time a person could have at one of their gigs. I got to dance on stage with them. I hugged Stuart and I told him how much I love his projects and it was just beyond all expectation. You couldn't even expect that kind of thing to happen, but it did, and it was so much fun, and I had the best time. So I knew when I got home I needed to get working on my cocktail for them. Actually, just for shits and giggles, I'll link the video up there of me dancing with them on stage, because that's quite funny. And uh, yeah, when I was thinking about how I would approach this cocktail, I wanted it to be whiskey-based, but lighter. Uh, Bell and Sebastian, I feel like most of their music the melodies don't speak to like a really heavy, manly, jazz kind of drink. It just doesn't work for them. So I thought about it and I came up with this recipe. And let me tell you what you're going to need so you can just kind of get on. You're going to need Frangelico. Now you might not need like an army size like I do in my house, but that's what happens when you're Italian. So this is the only semi-confusing element to the drink. And it's a strawberry puree that I made myself. I'll leave the detailed recipe down below and also on my website, mixology.com. And finally, you're going to need some scotch. I'm just using a blend here. This happens to be Ballantine's, I think. So yeah, just something middle of the road, a little bit smoky, nothing that tastes like metal, but definitely not anything overly nuanced because it kind of takes a second seat in this drink. So for this drink, you're going to mix it up with a very standard cobbler shaker. So it's these, in case you're unsure. But uh, yeah, it works perfect for this drink. You're going to need two ounces of scotch, depending on the size of the drink that you want to make. And then we're going to use about an ounce and a half of the strawberry puree, if I have enough. Since it's not overly sweet, you can get away with adding a bit more, uh, but do it to your taste. I just found that if you add not enough of it, you're going to find a little bit too much of the smokiness from the scotch, which you don't really want to impart on this drink. It should be a secondary note that you get. It's a bit thick, actually. You could probably water it down a bit when you make yours, but I didn't think of that when I did mine. <laughs> and then finally, you're going to need about an ounce of Frangelico from the Mammoth bottle. That is ridiculous. I really need to start to can think things. Ah! That was difficult, but I did it. <laughs> all right, so now all the ingredients are in my shaker and I'm just gonna add some ice. And now to shake. I need like a little maraca really at this point. <laughs> Dance around a bit. So now with our very cold drink and our chilled cocktail glass, we're just gonna strain this. And we're actually going to double strain this because we don't want the strawberry seeds and all of that in our drink. So straight through my double strainer it goes. And there we are, my Bell and Sebastian cocktail. All right, and really, here's the proof in the pudding. I gotta taste it now. Whoa. Okay, <laughs> this drink is very misleading in its sweetness, kind of like Belle and Sebastian themselves. Their lyrics and, well, no, not their lyrics, their melodies and the sound of their music can be quite happy, and then the lyrics are heartbreaking. So this drink seems sweet and kind on the surface, but it will knock you on your feet. So I guess it's very fitting. Because you used, well, I used a scotch base here, you're not getting the true flavors of anything else in the drink. So the strawberries don't necessarily taste the most strawberry-like that they ever you have. You just get an overall fruity flavor to the drink, but it's definitely very natural and non-artificial, which is nice. And uh, the Frangelico, you're picking up on the nuttiness, which plays really well with the scotch that adds a little bit of smokiness to it. But the beauty of this drink is the scotch doesn't taste heavy. I think that just about sums up uh, I don't know. I feel like the color works pretty well too. It's very kind of warm, soft, a little bit romantic, but earthy, if that makes any sense. And I feel like that would work well with B&S. And I wonder if they would drink this. Maybe we can tweet them and find out. But yeah, I think that sums it up on my front and I will talk to all of you really, really soon. Cheers. Cheers.